Well, good morning. Hey, I just want to say, uh, I just want to say thank you. Um, yeah, that was my aunt who passed away uh, last week. Um, that's a family member number five in the past two years. But, you know, I, it was really fitting, this passage that I'm about to preach this morning. And because it just, it just helped me give, it helped me have so much peace. Because I can worship a God who, who promises us life eternal life. And so I'm, I'm truly just, uh, I'm so just excited to worship uh, together with you um, today. I truly am. I'm so excited that we're able to celebrate um, uh, and, and, and watching someone follow through with obe- uh, believer's baptism and um, just that, that, that picture of, of being buried with Christ and we don't, the good news is we don't stay down there. The good news is we, the, 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 the grave, it was only borrowed. In the same way, we're raised to walk in newness of life. Right? That should give us joy. That should give us so much excitement. And we need to come in here each and every Sunday. And we need to... Just be so joyful and so excited no matter what's going on in your life. No matter what, if you, if you just had a, a experience of death like I did. Or maybe you're in a, a valley right now. And you're like, I, have no, I, I don't know where to turn. I've lost all hope. I've lost all peace. Where's my joy? How can I... This week especially, there's many Christians who are just so consumed with politics and oh man, if, if, if this person wins or this person wins, then my life is going to be over. No, no, it's not. God still has a plan for you. God still has a plan for this church. He loves us. He desires to use us. When we come in here each and every Sunday, not just on Sunday, by the way, but corporately together, worship the Lord, just enjoy, extreme joy. There are places around the world. It was, it was interesting. I... Uh, <clears throat> We got to, there's a Peru meeting today after church, so this is a little plug for that. But we got to meet with the pastor, with the children. And it, it, I was showing these pictures of where we were going to be going to the kids. And some of the churches had no walls. They met outside. They didn't have AC and it, it hit me. They're still serving the same Lord that we are. Even today, meeting, there's a church, a global church that we can worship alongside with. We need to praise the Lord daily. I'm, I am truly just so excited. And so last, last month, as Jaden alluded to, we had the opportunity to share our testimonies. Just the encouragement, the challenge was share your testimony to at least one person. Someone who is near to you, start there. Someone who is near to you that you love deeply. That you don't want to experience separation. Share your testimony with them. Near to you yet far from God. Share that. Well, October 31st came, and then uh, we started a new month. Jaden alluded to this earlier. Should we stop? No. 
you, you might be thinking, man, the, the month is over. Can we move on from this testimony stuff? Can we, come on, Chase, tone it down, asking me to share my testimony. T- uh, tone it down. I don't want to share the gospel. I don't, I can't have a gospel-centered conversation with people. I just, no, that's not me. I'll let you do that, okay? I'll let those radical Christians do that. But it's November, okay? No. Keep going. Keep going. Jesus calls Peter to be a fisher of men. This is our role as well. We're to be fishers of men. Sometimes, the thing with fishing is sometimes you catch fish. I've been, I I had the opportunity one time to go out on a boat and I was bass fishing with my friend. And then all of a sudden we were catching catfish, like over and over, all these fish, so excited. And we went out uh, the next time and guess how many fish we caught then? Nothing. You catch some fish and sometimes you don't. But can you catch a fish without throwing the line in? No, not at all. So that's the encouragement. All all we're to do is just cast our nets, cast the pole, and let God do the rest, okay? That's all we're called to do. Make disciples. We are called to just cast our lines. So we're called to go and make disciples who will worship, who will serve alongside us. And then those disciples go and tell others about Jesus. We were designed to worship We are designed to be fruitful and multiply at the very beginning. Each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. If you're a follower of Christ, you have the same Holy Spirit, the same message imprinted on your heart as I do. Really? Have you thought about that? You're telling me that we have the same Holy Spirit that Paul had? that Peter had, the other apostles. You're telling me that I have the same message that Billy Graham had? Yeah. We can't just rely on them. It's our duty. We're designed to worship. And our hearts, they're all prone to worshiping other things besides God. We're all prone to having an attitude, a posture that's resistant to worship. We don't want to worship. We don't want to sing praises to our God. And so, I, as last month ended, I was really praying about where to go next. Where to go next. And this month, we're going to be looking at a select few psalms. As we desire, as our desire is to encourage us to just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's the only one who's worthy of our praise. So today we'll be in Psalm 100. If you have a Bible, please turn with me to Psalm 100. And if you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to use the one in the seat back in front of you. And if you don't own a physical copy of God's word, I just go ahead and take the one that you're using. It's a gift from the church to you. We want everybody to have a copy of God's word. Go and study it. Psalm 100. It's in the middle of your Bible. Let me go ahead and pray as you get there. Father, we praise you today. There are so many things that we can be thankful for. Father, the greatest thing that we can be thankful for is that you sent your one and only son to live a sinless life, to die on a cross, to rise again. You defeated death. You saved me, Father. I pray that I would not get in the way of what you desire to do today. I pray that this message would just motivate us to to go out and to worship your name. I pray that this message will just convict people to repent and believe and turn to you, Father. Father, I pray that you would hide me behind your cross. Please be revealed 
Father, please speak through me. Please just fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for giving us grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 100, it says this. A psalm for thanksgiving. Uh, a psalm for thanks. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. That's it. There's five verses. It's a powerful psalm. Today I've titled the message as Reasons to Worship and Give Thanks. Reasons to Worship and Give Thanks. I have five of them. But don't worry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, preach for, for a long time on each in every point, but I have five. With it being November and, and the season of Thanksgiving, I wanted us to really slow down. To really slow down and try to encourage us to celebrate Thanksgiving. It's tempting, especially in September when you go to Walmart and you see Christmas decorations. I'm not bashing on anybody who celebrates Christmas before Christmas, or I'm not bashing on anybody who puts up decorations or lights, but I'm saying let's slow down and pause. Now, Thanksgiving isn't actually um, a holiday in, in the Bible, okay? It's, it's not uh, the, the, the reason why we give thanksgiving is um, obviously there in the Bible. But the, the day, November, right, that celebrated in America, you won't find that date in Scripture anywhere. But it's a day dedicated to truly give thanks. And it saddens my heart how the very next day we call Black Friday, and we rush to stores, not too often anymore because we rush to our phones to buy online. But in the past, we'll rush to stores and we're just so greedy and so consumed with stuff that honestly, sometimes just the stuff that we buy breaks or maybe we get rid of it because it's not new anymore. What happened the day before, just 24 hours later, or earlier? We were sitting around the table, sharing a meal with each other, giving thanks, giving affirmations to, the, to our family members. What happened? What happened? Well, let's focus on this psalm. This psalm is the only psalm with the title it has of uh, a psalm for giving thanks. It's the only one. It's dedicated to, uh, to giving thanks. And so this was used, uh, they would chant it or sing it as they were walking up to the temple to go uh, worship. They were really truly chanting this or singing it uh, to get their minds right, to get their hearts right. And so I truly think that it's fitting as we start at the first week of November we're going into Thanksgiving. Let's truly just calm down and get our minds and our hearts prepared to celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay? Slow way down. But why? Have you ever thought that they would sing this song? But why is singing so important? And why is this a song about Thanksgiving? Why? Why is it important to sing I'm taking a, uh, a class right now. Um, I don't even want to say what I'm taking because I'm not very good at it. But I'm taking a class that has a lot of memorization. And what they encourage us to do 
is to sing songs. And so on YouTube, they have all of these songs uh, for all the words, the vocabulary, the different paradigms that I'm supposed to be learning. And it's just honestly kind of silly songs. But did you know that songs help us remember? That's why we sing. That's why we teach the kids ABCs in a song format, right? It's to help us remember, to help us learn. And so singing is important. It is so highly important. I can probably bring uh, back memories if I play a certain song for you. Or if I just say one word, maybe you guys will start singing with me. Should I do it? Sweet home. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I said two words. But yeah, I can say just a, a few words and you'll know what that song is. Did you know that um, that's, that's what happened in the, in the Bible? Psalm 22 was immediately recognized as Jesus was on the cross and he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They went back, whoa, he's referring to himself in Psalm 22. That's what that, that psalm is about. You're, you're saying that that's, it, that's him? They knew. It didn't take that long. And so this psalm has seven commands in verses 1 through 4 that all lead a purpose behind these commands that are found in verse 5. And so a lot of people, they don't really like being told what to do. Commands, that's a, that's a word that I don't really quite like to use in my vocabulary because I can't really command people to do stuff or they're not going to do it, right? I learned really quickly, um, I can't tell when I was uh, doing therapy, I can't tell people what to do. I can't give advice. They're going to be resistant. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I would give homework assignments. They wouldn't get completed. But if we, if we place this above everything, then the word command shouldn't uh, make us, like, oh, resistant. But it should make us want to o obey it. Right? And so seven commands just in these... These four verses, they're not suggestions, but they're directions that will guide our worship. Think of it like a tour guide, okay? Make a joyful noise. That's where it starts in verse 1. Make a joyful wor uh, noise. Do this, right? That's a command. Make. Make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord. That's a command. Come into his presence. That's another command. Know that the Lord, he is God. Another one. Enter his gates, give thanks to him, and bless his name. You could also think of these commands as ingredients that, that make up the reason why at the end, which is the Lord is good. The Lord is good, period. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness extends to all generations. That's what we can rest in. But let's look at this first one, right? Let's go quickly. Sing to the Lord so others can benefit. Sing to the Lord so others can benefit. We were designed to express our worship by singing. But we must remember who we are singing to. Who are you singing to? Who are you worshiping? Would your face, indi would, would your face appear like this if you knew that you were singing to the creator of the universe? The creator of you, the one who has you in his hand, I, I don't think that we would if we truly knew that. 
We are singing to the Lord. The Lord desires to hear us sing. One of the greatest joys I have as a father is to listen to my little three-year-old sing. Man, and he sings all the time. His little voice. It makes me so happy. He'll sit there singing songs in the car. He'll, he'll demand a certain songs to be played. And he'll encourage us to sing too. Dad, turn on the song, Who Let the Dogs Out? <laughs> all right. Mom and Dad, sing with us. Come on. All, all right, Lincoln, okay. So he gets other people to sing too. I have to admit, when I'm in the car or when I'm alone by myself, I can belt it out. But then, right when I pull up to a stoplight, turn the radio down. Uh, Why is that, though? Why is that? I'm not concerned with others hearing me and why, 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 why can't this be the same posture and attitude when I worship corporately with you all? Why? Why can't we just belt it out? Sing to the, with the most, just, I can't even describe it. I don't have a word. Sing. Why am I concerned with what you think? I think the excuse for most of us, me, is that I don't sing enough. We don't sing enough as a culture. We come in here and we expect there's an expectation. There's an order of service. You got to have your three songs, maybe four. Well, if we do five, then, oh, come on, get on with it. If we, if we uh, play a song at the end of the service, come on, it is 11 o'clock. What? They need to stop singing. That church sings too much. What? I think we don't sing enough, Jaden. We are to make a joyful noise to the Lord. J- Let me tell you something. Yeah, Jaden might be the one that is leading us in worship week after week, but you and I are in the choir. You and I are in the band. Do you know that? Or we, should we just have everybody stand up here and Jaden direct us this way, like the, the choir, and then, and then we, we go and sit in our pews, all, all of us. We're all in this together. We're all commanded to make a joyful noise to the Lord. That should give us motivation. It truly should. Our singing can encourage others to sing and praise the Lord as well. Joyfully singing is contagious. It truly is. I read something recently, how I thought, um, my, my, my thought actually shifted in this, is that others will actually sing louder if they, they aren't heard, that's the thought. Or when musical instruments are turned up loud, the, the, the thought is that there will be people will sing louder. Did you know that's not the case, though? It's not. This is actually not the case. Congregations sing louder when they can hear others singing and when the music is turned down lower. That's, that, that blew my mind. How can all the earth sing if they have never heard? Think about that for a minute. Sing so others can listen and join in. It shouldn't matter if we can sing or not. 
we must remember who we are praising so others can benefit. Next, sing and serve the Lord with joyful obedience, with a joyful posture. Verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Sometimes it's, it, it, it is appropriate to sing and reflect on songs that are more somber or serious in nature. It wouldn't be quite fitting if we had a Good Friday service and we were to blare um, loud, uh, loud music, loud worship music. Why? And I think sometimes that's, a, that's the tendency for us. When painful experiences happen, and, and they happen, we do that because we want to mask the pain. We just want to listen to upbeat music all the time and songs that make us happy. Songs that move our spirits to just put a smile on our face when in all reality, sometimes it's appropriate to sing songs that remind us of the cross. Remind us how much Jesus paid the price for your sins. But let's not, be, let's not let that be the only posture that we have because if we do that, we forget that the tomb was just borrowed. It was. We don't have to walk around with a somber look on our face all the time. We have freedom. We can sing joyfully and serve with gladness. Oh, death, where is your sting? We can say that with a smile on our face. Come on, where, where is your sting? Can you say that with confidence? Or are we walking around? Oh, death, where is your sting? When is this going to end? No. It's come into his presence with gladness. And this should motivate us to serve other people with a glad, authentic heart. Serve out of obedience, not out of obligation. Some uh, would, would sing songs and throughout history. Uh, slaves would sing songs or chants to try to mask the pain. But we... If you're a believer in Christ, our singing should not just be to pass time on this earth. Yes, we live in a broken world. Yes, we experience pain. Yes, we experience suffering. But we don't have to sing to pass time. I, going back to last week, really quick, really quick. Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were praying and they were singing. Not to pass time, but to worship the Lord. Period. They sang because they were filled with the Holy Spirit and he gave them an abundance abundance of joy in a difficult and challenging situation sing with gladness quickly let's keep going the lord we worship made us and takes care of us this is another reason why we can sing and praise the lord he made us and he takes care of us it says know that the lord he is god stop there the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Loving the Lord is knowing that He is God, and we are not. 
There are no other gods before him. Knowing God is trusting him with our lives. Do you know the Lord? Do you know that he is God? We can go back at the very beginning. How do you know that the Lord is God? He created us. That's how we can know. We are his people, it says, and, and the sheep of his pasture. We can talk all day about how sheep are dumb, stupid. I mean, quite frankly, they kind of are. In fact, sheep can't even survive on their own. They need a shepherd. Or they'll wander off. They'll even walk off cliffs. They need that shepherd to fight off enemies and keep them safe. They also, sheep, they also serve a very valuable purpose. You and I serve a very valuable purpose. Sheep are, are valued, they're sheared, and their wool is used for clothing. And in the Old Testament, they were the sacrifice. If you didn't have the spotless lamb, what would happen? This was their act of worship. That's why Paul encourages us to be a living sacrifice in Romans 12. We are the sheep of his pasture, where we experience safety, comfort, and peace. And his pasture is not limited, but he owns it all. He owns the sheep and the, the hills. He's the only God who has all and that he made us out of nothing. So he's the owner of all but nothing at the same time. Nobody else can say that. Even if you think that you have nothing, God's the only one who can truly say that he can make you out of nothing. Did we really, do we really think about that? Do we really fathom that? God can just speak and boom, creation happens out of nothing. Nobody else can do that. Next, thanksgiving and praise are due to him. It's encouraged all throughout the Bible to give thanks and praise the Lord. Paul encourages the church in 1 Thessalonians 5.16. It says, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. And then he says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We have so much to be thankful for. And that's a common phrase that I truly don't think that we understand. I don't. Can, can I be honest? I, I don't. When people throw around the phrase of, you have so much to be thankful for, the first thought that comes to my mind is, man, yeah, God has truly blessed me with a church, with my family, with a, a job, with kids. I have a car. We live in a country that has privileges, freedoms, And these are all really great things. And we should truly, we should truly thank the Lord for them. But do we understand that we have something even greater than this to be thankful for? Do we really truly understand that? Or does the first thing that comes to my mind when, when I say we have so much to be thankful for, you think of your, your freedoms that you have. You think of your family that you have. You think of your job that you have. Is that the first thing that comes to my mind? Or do you think about how we serve a gracious, merciful, loving, just, all-knowing, all-powerful, all all-present, the triune God who gives us each breath? Do we think about that? 
Are we thankful for those things? This God, he didn't just leave us though. He sent his one and only son who lived a sinless life, died on a cross, rose again and rescued us from the power of sin and death. That's why we can be thankful. Did you hear me? That's why we can be thankful. Knowing this, it should improve the way that we pray. Colossians 4.2, it says, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Okay, lastly. The last reason that we can praise the Lord is that the Lord is good. The Lord is love. The Lord is faithful forever to all generations. These are all reasons and commandments to worship because God is good. He is loving. But let's be honest. Sometimes believing God is good, all loving, and all faithful is challenging. Let's really, let's really be honest with each other. Let's be authentic. Do we ever really, do we always remember that the Lord is good? Do we always really remember that the Lord is loving and faithful? There are things in this world that cause grief, sorrow, pain. And sometimes, quite frankly, it takes years to process. We can't live in this world and just be so consumed with those things, though. How can a good God allow such evil to happen? How can a loving God, who we call Father, let disease, famine, war, and death happen? What? The God you serve isn't good, some will say, when evil exists. How can we, have, how can we say that God is faithful when he let me suffer and be in debt in this world? These are honestly really tough questions to wrestle with. I'm not going to stand up here and pretend like I have all your answers. Because quite frankly, I don't. All I can say is what helps me answer these questions. And we'll never be content or joyful if we're always searching for questions, for, for answers to the questions that we have like that. Why, why, why? We'll never be joyful. We'll always be searching. The only thing, the only thing that satisfies me is knowing simply that God is God and that I'm not. I'm not. He's not a bad God. All these things that I mentioned earlier, disease, famine, war, death, suffering, I could go on, addiction, pain, you name it, evil, that's not God's design. It's quite frankly not God's design. Okay? We live in a broken, a sinful, a fallen, chaotic world. These are the results of the fallen, sinful world that we live in. I can rest in the fact that the good, loving, and faithful God that I serve and that we sing about, He had a solution. He sent His one and only Son, as I mentioned earlier. That was the solution. He knew it from the very beginning. He would send one to crush the head of the serpent while being struck on the heel. He knew from the very beginning. He rose from the grave. He didn't have to do this, but he was obedient because he loves you and I so much. 
Friends, he loves you. Do you believe that? The good, loving, and faithful God desires to have a relationship with you. Do you know that? And this world that we live in, although Jesus gave us hope and an opportunity for eternal life, this world that we live in is still broken. But I have really, really, really good news. He promises that one day he's going to return and he's going to make it new. We shouldn't live in fear, but we should live singing loud. And showing the world who we are singing to. He's coming back soon and this is something to be thankful for. So I'm going to invite Jaden to come up and lead us in a time of response this morning. These are just some reasons that I shared with you. Of why we can be thankful Why? Why? Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. How's your heart posture today? Come into his presence with singing. Did you know that it's important to worship corporately together with other believers? But don't let that stop. Let's be a church that's truly devoted to each other, where we encourage each other to continue outside beyond the walls of this church. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise his glorious, wonderful, precious name. And I want to invite you. We have the Baptist refilled. What's stopping you today? What's stopping you? We, in Acts, there's a situation where uh, Stephen shared the gospel with somebody, an Ethiopian eunuch, and he said, hey, there's water right there. And he said, what's stopping you? Philip, by the way, not Stephen. But and he he's, he he followed through in believers' baptism immediately. What's stopping you from praising the Lord? Let's leave this building today just truly in a posture of praise. Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful day. I thank you so much for saving me, for rescuing me giving me eternal life. Father, even through all the suffering and sorrow that my family's experienced, Father, that this church has experienced, Father, I I praise you. I glorify you. Father, if there's someone here today who can't say that they've ever started praising you, I pray that you would just tug on their heart right now. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand.